So just a couple of words about the uh, Vardin CDI integration. So I was talking about this uh, after the uh, summer vacations. Some of you might even remember something about it. So uh, Vardin CDI integration is uh, now coming out as an official uh, Vardin add-on for CDI support. And uh, I'll just start simply by telling what the actual CDI stands for. So. It's the uh, context and dependency injection, JSR299. And its key features are basically the inversion of control, the injection, scoping, events, and decoupling of uh, different, let's say, uh, larger structures and, and, and components of each other. So by using CDI, you are able to write code which is uh, less coupled and uh, works with the inversion of control principles allowing you to use injections. And uh, if you're familiar with the uh, event bus in Spring, for example, the CDI provides similar kind of an event mechanism that allows you to deliver events uh, from component to another based on a mechanism that doesn't even require those components to be coupled together. So in order to make all this work in Vardin, we have created uh, with Adam Bean a Vardin CDI add-on or extension for Vardin, and it uses some code from uh, Tomi Virkki's uh, CDI utils, which was for Vardin 6. And uh, we've also had and have also added some, some new ideas and, and things for this. So anyways, the uh, couple of key points are that uh, all the Vardin UIs work as managed beans. So what this means is that in order to, in CDI, to be able to actually inject something into your into your application code, the bean, which is the injection target, must always be managed. So this is exactly what Vardin CDI does. It'll allow you to have your Vardin UIs and views as managed beans. And we've also implemented the automatic deployment mechanism. So it means that you don't need any deployment descriptors or WebXML. So basically, just use annotations as in Java EE6, and everything should work pretty much out of the box. And also, as the uh, CDI supports uh, different contexts and scope, uh, the uh, uh, dividing UI scope is also uh, implemented into the actual features of Vardin CDI. So everything defined in a Vardin UI are automatically scoped with the, the uh, proper UI instance. And then uh, just a couple of more features uh, there are in, in Vardin CDI uh, is the uh, Navigator API support. So you can also have Vardin views as uh, managed beans. Then also the uh, JAS integration has been bundled with the Vardin CDI mostly because it was rather easy, but it also provides some, some additional nice features which you might find useful. And uh, based on JAS, we also have a role-based and or role-based uh, authentication and uh, view and component visibility management, for example. So how do you use this? Uh, there are basically one key annotation, which is uh, Vardin UI. And you use that annotation with your uh, UI class, which you extend from the uh, Vardin, Vardin UI. And if that is your only UI within the application, you can also specify the root annotation. And in order to... Uh, actually uh, visit this UI, you can then, uh, from your domain, access the application from its context path. So the root annotation is the one that assigns this UI to the context path. And if you want to have more specific mapping for your UI, you can give it as a parameter for the Vardin UI annotation. And this will then uh, just add the UI after your actual application context path. Same idea anyways. Then also, when you have the UI, uh, it's now a managed CDI bean. You can then inject whatever additional uh, pochos or components into your UI or any other uh, pocho inserted into the, into the UI. So for example, uh, if you wanted to add something to your my bean here, uh, it would of course work because my bean is just as well now a managed bean because it's injected into the UI. And uh, with EJBs, you can just as well use the EJB annotation if you want uh, to have more configurability. But you can, of course, just as well use inject here. But uh, if you have some special needs, you can use the uh, properties and attributes from the EJB annotation. Then also uh, the uh, CDI event support. 
So uh, in CDI, there is a possibility to inject an event object uh, into which you can give your own, own pocho. And uh, from the uh, event API, you can call fire for the event and just fire your events all around your application within your scope. And now all these events fired in your or from your Vaadin UI are uh, managed to show that they are only transmitted for the uh, beans within your Vaadin UI scope. So everything you have dis defined in your Vaadin UI will receive the events, but nothing else. And I know this is sort of a limitation. We're probably at some point uh, maybe a little bit modifying this, but currently events are only transmitted inside the UI. Um, then when you want to actually receive the event, you just uh, implement a method that has a observes annotation in the uh, method signature, and uh, you just sort of receive your event and then process it the way you want. <coughs> then uh, just a couple of words about the Navigator API. So in Vaadin 7, there is a new API for, for navigation, which works with the URI fragments. And the uh, CDI integration works with this so that all your views you annotate with Vaadin view annotation as you do with your UIs, only that the views must implement the Navigator API's view interface. And then you can, into your UI, for example, inject CDI view provider. And the view provider works so that it'll uh, look up the actual URI fragment from your URL, and depending on the implementation, it can or cannot either uh, provide the view, which will then be forwarded to the actual Navigator. And in order to use the view provider, you simply must add it to the uh, Navigator with the add provider API method. And when you use those views, uh, this is pretty much how the URLs are shown. So basically, there's the context path, the UI, and then the actual view within your UI. Then really quickly about the chat support. So basically, there's a chat tools class, which has a couple of uh, static methods. Uh, you can Log in, log out, ask if the user has logged in, and then also you can ask the roles from the user. And this has, of course, nothing to do with the CDI, but it's just been implemented into the same add-on because the integration was rather straightforward. And what the JAS actually does is that it's a container-level authentication and authorization, so you don't have to provide any of your own uh, role or user classes in your, your own application, but instead you can, for example, use LDAP or, or whatever from the container managed layer. And then some role features. So there's also another class called Component Tools, and it'll allow you to, for example, uh, enable or disable <coughs> some component based on, on role information of the user. So these all apply for the currently logged in user. And also for the components, you can set them visible or or not, based on the role information. And the Vaadin view annotation, which you use with the Vaadin view uh, interface or the Vaadin view implementations, can also allow you to have the roles allowed uh, parameter, which then works with JAS and does not let the user to actually see the view if, if it's not uh, defined as, as his roles are, are allowed to. And what's good news is that after a long discussion, uh, we have decided to release the Vaadin CDI as Apache 2 licensed, so it can be used in any project from now on. It's uh, currently not yet released, but it's uh, available currently in GitHub as a Maven project, so you can download it and build it with Maven. Uh, it currently works with the latest nightly. There are some tests which are not passing at the moment, but those are currently a little bit minor issue at the moment. But we'll fix them, of course. And a couple of things good to know with the CDI is that you don't need the WebXML, but if you decide to use it, then you'll have to uh, specify a listener as the uh, automatic deployment mechanism in Vaadin CDI uses the, uh, uh, the uh, servlet context listener, which uh, is, of course, required to run in order to deploy the UIs. And as we deploy UIs and servlets dynamically, we use the servlet 3.0 API, so that's why you're going to need a container that supports that. And also, some CDI implementation, such as Weld, is required. So if you use just Tomcat 7, it's not going to work unless you at least add the CDI implementation char. And uh, there's one point that is really important. Uh, add an empty beans XML, which is zero bytes, so nothing in it, into your web in folder 
in order to activate the CDI. Otherwise, the context deployer is not able to find that. And a nice bonus feature is that now that we're using JAS, if you log in, the actual security context is propagated into the EJBs. So if you have specified some EJB methods which roles allowed annotation, those will also work uh, directly as a uh, backend side security mechanism. So I know it's not yet ready, not definitely not polished, and all the features are not yet in there, but you can try it out, download it from the GitHub, and use it with your CF projects, for example. Any questions? Great. Thank you.